Internationally acclaimed actress and director Bai Ling. Bai Ling is an international star. She's one of Hollywood's most decorated minority actresses, a platform through which she speaks on behalf of minority groups, women initiatives, and personal empowerment. Bai Ling began her career at the age of 14 when she enlisted in the People's Liberation Army in China. She gained international attention when she won the coveted lead role opposite Richard Gere in John Abnett's Red Corner, for which she received numerous accolades, including prestigious awards from National Board of Review and the Discovery Star. To date, she's worked with the prestigious who's who of filmmakers, such as Oliver Stone, George Lucas, Will Smith, Spike Lee, Jodie Foster, and many others. Bai Ling is a global philanthropist and in many ways a spiritual mentor for her countless dedicated fans. She has made public her divergence from alcohol and has been sober since 2012. Bai, what's it like? You're sober now. What is life like being sober? I feel like I'm free and flying in the air like suddenly um, for a while. I can be who I am. I can be brave enough mm -hmm. just to, with my um, naked eyes, and naked body, naked soul to feel the world, feel the real life. That's a gift. I think a lot of people are afraid of that feeling of danger or darkness or something unknown. But I'm challenged that, so I let myself be vulnerable. You know, I wonder to myself, you're young, and I, you probably got sober really young. It's been like four or five years, I think you have. What's, what was it like getting sober so young? Well, I think, you know, talking about years and time, to me it's like everything before yesterday, I erased them. Everything tomorrow, I don't know. I live like a newborn child. It's like always fresh, curious, and clean and simple. Simple life now I have. After sober, you're asking me, I feel I'm like reborn again. Mm -hmm. I feel like really life's reopened to me, the world I've never seen before. Because everybody has their darkness of fear. So I'm challenging my fear. I feel like so excited. So it's really, really challenging and really, really, it's a new excitement of life come to me that I really appreciate. I so feel that energy and I would love to know how you can translate that energy to the young people today. You know, we have this epidemic of heroin overdoses. Right. It's, it's, it's national, it's international. And I'm wondering, what else are you doing in the recovery community to spread this message of, of hope? I think the key word is you have to find the meaning of why you're here, you have to love yourself. I think love yourself is most important. Love yourself, appreciate who you are, appreciate what you have, appreciate, you know, a lot of people say like obstacles, they're afraid of obstacles. I think there's no difficulty, obstacle you cannot conquer. Any obstacles showed up in your road, on your life, it's because you have the ability, a strength to overcome. So if you embrace that, that means, oh, just found these obstacles I can overcome because it just tests me. It's all testing. So inspired. So why do you think these kids are feeling so broken? What do you think is going on in the world today? I think also, you know, like we're in the entertainment business, like Hollywood, mm -hmm. a lot of pressure, a lot of fame, money, and success. I think success drives people to the cliff because I think the real success is the process. Like the Oscar coming, right? Oscar week. Everybody uh -huh. will think who's going to win, all of that. It's irre irrelevant. To me, it's irrelevant. It's a celebration of the hard work. Mm -hmm. But people are so much caught up on the who's winning this or winning that. But this is just human beings set up the trial field to celebrate life. But people use it as your goal. If you that thing become your goal, you're going to get lost because you cannot get that. That just is it's a light. When you're driving a boat, mm -hmm. there's a light. Just ask you to go this direction. It's not necessarily when you hit there, you're somebody. It's the process. It's the journey. I think you have to know what you want, and there's so many meaning of life. Uh -huh. What is actually success to you? Like for me, it's like, I feel like I'm very lucky. Even today I'm here, I feel there's a lot of wisdom here. I even ask my personal questions. Uh -huh. I think there's a beauty, there's a enlightenment, there's a success. Like I, I have a little answer from you. I feel like, wow, I'm successful today. So you're intuitive, you have mm -hmm. all this wisdom, you have all this insight for such a young person. Thank Where you. did you get this from? Did you have a mentor? Was, was there somebody out there that taught you some of these things? Or is this coming from deep, deep, deep down in your soul? Good question. I think a lot of people ask me who's my idol or who I admire. Probably my answer is going to surprise you. It's my grandmother. Uh, your ancestors. which uh, is My grandmother. Uh -huh. But she, like, um, 
I feel like your parents like always uh, want you to be the thing or the person, the job they never done. They want their children to do. Mm -hmm. But grandparents are just indulging you. If you want to go to school, don't go. Like my grandparents totally indulge me. Therefore, I have this free spirit. And also, my gran I remember in the Chinese New Year. Now it's Chinese New Year, just over. Uh -huh. Like we're all play mahjong and eating all that, uh -huh. right? Everybody going to sleep late. Yeah. But in the middle of the night, go get up a pee. Then I saw the doors open. I said, "Who's that?" My grandmother come back with a scarf on her face, all red. She said, "Shh." She went out clean all the snows on the footstep, everybody's doorstep, and she did not say I did. She said, "Don't tell anybody." And I was curious in my mind. I went out. I said, "Wow, you know this behavior is stay with me forever. It's like generous giving without asking reward. It's giving, the spirit of giving, appreciation." Did she believe in your dream to be an actress and a film star? It's funny, like you're you're our our how do you say connected, tuned. You're asking uh, question yes. because you're just like in my journey. So. When I was in China, it was like so hot summer, right? We're lying outside in the pavement, just like because it's so hot, we don't have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. We're just lying on the sheet, looking at the stars. I see so many stars, we're like counting the stars. I see grandmother, I see the stars so bright, I want to be the star. My oh. grandmother, you are the star. I say, really, which one? She says, the brightest one. So just that alone, I believed in the little young mind of girl. Huge I said, impact. Right? I said, wow, I'm the star. I'm the brightest star. And when you're a child, you don't doubt. You just trust. From there, like, a lot of people ask me, I'm taping a little bit farther, how you find your dream. That's why I think that like, in China, all over the world, even for a lot of your people trying to recover, mm -hmm. it's like you have to believe. Like I come here, I don't know English, I don't know anybody. How can I become a movie star in Hollywood? It's just, it's not gonna happen. But for me, I'm so innocent. I feel like uh, I describe like a picture. It's, uh, it's a little innocent, vulnerable girl walking in the dark night, darkness with barefoot. She just walking, she trusting. Then suddenly there's a moon up here, just guide her. That's my journey. We are so connected because my next yeah. question, we're kind of following each other's lead, it's really fascinating, is when did the darkness occur? You know, I know you from Celebrity Rehab, and I, I wonder when, when, did, when did it switch up? When did it change and become, you know, maybe tell a little bit about that journey. I think my my soul, like my name, white spirit, white bai white means spirit. white, white, uh, white, white spirit. Bai uh -huh. means white. In the Chinese characters, it's the simplest character, but the Ling it means soul, a spirit. It's the most complex character in Chinese. Ah. So it's like I'm like a child, yet I'm connected to the soul world. It's very com complex. Uh -huh. I feel like a part of me, I have a little spirit. A part of their their darkness come to when you're so bright, the always shadow trying to take your light away. I feel like when I'm vulnerable enough, they come in. That's why the alcohol, the darkness years. When I was in China, I had that problem. I was in a mental hospital. So I feel that I want to commit suicide. I always want to dress like kind of sexy or mini skirt. Mm -hmm. It's just part of me, very free. You, that's like, your essence. You have an yeah, essence. Yeah, like my mm -hmm. free spirit as a this sexy woman, I want to show up. Mm -hmm. It's not I want to impress anybody or attract. It's just I. It's who you are. It's yeah, what's oh, inside yeah. of you. You're very proud. You're yeah. very confident. Then in the chi Chinese community, they see, oh, I'm trying to attract a man. I'm, I have all the purpose. I don't have purpose. So I feel like you're I'm, just being can, you. Yes, but they said I don't understand. So I feel like what can I do? I feel like they don't understand it, but I don't know how to explain it. So I feel like uh, there's a um, part partially like dark side of me. I don't know how to live. I feel like I should not belong here. I should not. I should not live, so I had that struggle. I was in a mental hospital. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was very comfortable there because in the mental hospital, I actually become free. But in the human world, I'm, I'm so terrified. So it wasn't because there had been trauma in your life or anything like that. It was just some sort of essence inside of you. It was sort of a no. I think society. I, I'm sorry to challenge the system of society. I think society. It's a, a lot of rules or laws are good, but ah. a lot of them are against your nature of grew up as a free spirit person. I see, okay, you know I mean? right. I remember when I grew up as keep writing apology letters to my parents, to my school teacher, to my army leader, to my government. And everything I do, so I'm like uh, offended against somebody, but I'm not, I have no You just intention. wanted to be you. That's all yes. you were asking for is yeah. I just wanted to be you. So I think the, the alcohol comes to me, it's, because that part of me, I'm, I'm sensitive, I'm aware of what can I do, what I cannot. Uh -huh. but, the, um, but when I'm there, I'm frozen. Like when I was a child in school, you don't even know the teacher asked me a question, I would stand up. He said, Bai Lin, answer the question. He said, okay, you don't have to answer, just say yes or no. I'm just frozen. 
Then they were like the whole class, and finally they take me to the office. So you would be anxious inside. No, you I'm, be I'm frozen. For, I'm, I'm blocked. I'm, for, I'm blocked. terrified. Exactly. Terrified. Terrified. Like a social so they, anxiety. Yeah, they of. take me to the office. So what's going on? I'm like as if. So finally they called my parents here. Said, so "What's wrong with your two girl? She's kind of rude or something." I feel like I'm kind of jumping out of my body. I'm looking at myself, say, what's wrong with you? Is this terrified of life? I think a lot of your young audience is afraid of life, afraid of oh, failure. I love this. This is so yeah. important. And afraid of judgment and afraid of Codependency, loss. which yeah, is our totally. big, big word. So they were, they're finding something. So when I find the alcohol actually free me to be me again, like the paparazzi, let's see in Hollywood, right? I see Bailin, oh, we like you, let's just dance and run, and sometimes my nipple jumps up. Or, I don't know, but they encourage that. But they have their purpose, I don't know, I trust them. Uh -huh. I do all these things, but they, in the end, that's what I was saying, I'm like kind of like a um, machine, Hollywood machine created this, this victim of the Hollywood pop culture. Because you say, say oh, Biden, you dance, you're good. But they're filming your nipples or the places you're not supposed to do. But I'm trusting them. So that brings me to another question. How do you stay aligned to who you are and your values in Hollywood? Because, because there is so much scrutiny. And yeah, there is because so of, uh, I, I want to come back to my own. This mm -hmm. way, I like, I don't live in Hollywood. I don't like to be always there. I have my own environment, which I can be alone. I can go back to where my grandmother. So you have a grounding place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I go there, I say, well, what is success? What do I want? What is its energy around me? I say, do I really want that? Yeah. So when I come back, you have to be solid. You know, to be brave, to be alone, that's very important. Because people are always running around with people. They're so free to be by themselves. Yeah. But when you're scared to be with who you are, then you can never find you. Exactly. You that's, well, that's you. what drugs and alcohol is. It's right. running from yourself. It's yes. wanting to get out of your body. So what I'm hearing you say is you've learned how to be in your body and be really comfortable and not and to be, show and that not be in that you. disease. Yeah. Yes, exactly. To show there's a brilliance in you. You have to be brave to challenge. When you're really, as long as you don't harm anything, you have to, like, we're all different. We all have but brilliance. We all have strengths. So what was that moment of clarity where you decided, you know, I'm done. I'm going to, I'm going to get sober. That's it. I'm done. I think the point is, I, I feel, because I, I love sauna room, jacuzzi, I was always in the sauna room. Before the sauna room, I always drink. So when I'm in the sauna room. Can you imagine the heat is there? There's nobody there. I'm like, literally, I knew if I close my eyes, for instance, I'll die there. Because uh. the heat is there when you're drunk. How long you can, right? Exactly. I feel you, like Again, one it sounds day, like you had that intuition. Yeah, one day I said, I'm going to die here if I don't do something. Wow. So that's, it's the death threatening me. And I feel like if I don't do something, so until I come to the cliff, either I'll fall or I have to go back. So you have to run, but people don't have to go there. You know, right. you can stop because our, like all of us is example. Exactly. You don't have to go that far, but you need to gain that strength to trust you. You are magic. You're a star. I believe everybody's a star in this world. You mm -hmm. just have to go. It doesn't matter. You're a chef, you're shoe shine, whatever you do, mm -hmm. you're making coffee like a Starbucks, like everything. Everything you do, if you do the extreme, the brilliant, you'll be a star in the world. That's beautiful. I think something you just have to trust. We we're born here for a reason. You're brilliant. You have to trust that. So what would you say to that kid who's like, you know, I think I'm just going to explore a little bit with pot. I think I'll just explore a little heroin. Because nowadays they're exploring with heroin. When I was a kid, you explored with pot. You didn't explore with heroin. Right. What would you say to that kid who feels he's ostracized, doesn't feel like a part of, he's highly sensitive. As we know, addicts and alcoholics are very sensitive inside their hearts. What would you say to that lonely person that wants to fit in? I feel like if you want to try something, then you're afraid of something, and you already know that's bad, you should stop, because that's a test. Use this as a test. If you're strong enough, like you play video game, that's a test. You cannot go there. You go there, for sure, you're going to die, mm -hmm. because that's just death. Use that as a test, if you can resist it. If you can, that means you, you gain another power in you. You gain more confidence and trust. Right. Use it as that's a where test. you get your self-esteem from. Yeah, because it's, it's like you're eating something bad. Why do you have to go there? You know, you know it's bad. You don't have to. You just have to believe that. Just test on the edge. You say, oh, I'm strong. I don't have to go there. Right. You can show all your friends, I, w I was there, but I didn't fall. I think you use every obstacle as a test to see how strong you are to challenge you. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, we also speak a lot to the parents, the family. Sometimes we're so, uh, you know, interested in the addict, alcoholic, right. we forget about the families that suffer too. So what might you say to a family member whose child the, is struggling? Yeah, I think the family, the, the, the problem with the parents, they're always so 
rule, a lot of rules and stick and very harsh to their children. Don't do this, don't do that. But we're like a rebel as a child. You say, I don't, I'm going to do this. I do that too. But it's better to say, well, I'm telling you that's darkness and that's not good. But if you want to try it, your own responsibility. But what about the parent who Give keeps them trying? Power. But what about they keep trying? They keep putting their child in rehab. They keep supporting them. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. How do you help somebody kind of let go with it, love? I think they, they help. You have to have, like, for example, tell them, have face to face sober, tell them what's the danger. Just write it down what is exactly. Then they say, it's your life. You're on your own. If you don't want to help yourself, Go for it. Half of the time, like people are afraid to challenge so people are gonna die. You how, how can you leave them? But if you give them a heavy enough, like I'm holding. What you're you. saying is you're trusting them. Yeah. You're if I hold trust. you all the time, mm -hmm. you say you're gonna you say you're gonna jump the cliff. I say no no don't jump don't jump. You say you're gonna jump because you know you're safe. If I said okay look at me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, let you go. go. If you wanna jump to your own life, you wanna go. But I'm telling you, I'm for sure gonna left you. Okay, but I'm telling you, you're gonna die. Your life is so much worse than that. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, yeah. child. You release it. It's basically detaching. You release it. Not, not there. You turn around. I guarantee the child would not jump. Mm -hmm. But nobody can go that far because you're so. It's our fear, and the children's play with us. The darkness well, play they, with they, us. Right. They're manipulating right? the situation. But if you let go, you see the children gonna kneeling down, cry for your mom, come back. I want you. I'm sure that's helping a parent out yeah, there with totally, this interview. Yeah, totally. Because we're so, we're so. Think like even like I've noticed American culture. We go to India and go to China. You get all the shot. You eat. You take medicine. All of it's not necessary. We're all human. You're not gonna die. It's too much of uh, fear. Too much trusting these things are not necessarily safe. Well, would you say fear and codependency are the two things that are underneath addiction? I've always felt that those yeah, yeah, are the yeah. two things that underlie addiction: is fear and codependency, right. worrying about what people think and fear. Yeah, I think you have to know your self worth. You have to let them be independent, take the chance. You mm -hmm. have, ultimately, no matter what you do, the children grow up who they are. They have to take their journey. Yeah. If they fall, they know how to go back. Sometimes they have to fall enough, they feel they're gonna die, they come back. Exactly. You can't stop them, it's their own journey. Right. You just have to say, I am here if you need help. Well, or, or they own. have their own higher power, which brings me to another question. What has kept you sober? Do you have a program? Do you go to meetings? Do you have a higher power? What is it that's worked for you? Um, the work for me is because I'm so busy, I'm trapped. I went to a couple of meetings of AA, which is really uh -huh, helpful. Uh -huh. And I suggest people are awake enough, you should go. I mean, going to a meeting and identifying, hi, my, my name is such and such, I'm an alcoholic. I do, I go back and forth mm -hmm. because basically you're stigmatizing yourself. Right. But for some, they need to. They need to be reminded. They need to be reminded where they were. They need to be reminded about when they were in that sauna and they were ready oh, yeah. to die. Yeah. That's, that's really But I think it's really, there's a purpose. Uh, let's take a little bit further or deeper. We're dealing with the sickness, whatever is in, in the very current, but, but let's think Spiritual that. sickness. Yeah, let's think about we're both alcoholic, right? We're here, the doctor's here, whatever tell us we cannot do. But what about somebody tell us, I mean, there's a mission for you, only you can do. You're a brilliant filmmaker, you have to do. Like you're brilliant a coach, psychiatrist, you have to help so many people. Put us in that standard, and this little alcohol thing become minor. We want to achieve that. So finding how? their area of brilliance, yeah. exactly. Finding your goal. So how can we achieve that? If you you keep drunking, of course you cannot achieve it. Biling, wake up. This is your goal. You're brilliant. You have to go there. For example, you're a leader of the country. You're a leader of the world. So what is you're your so what is your area of brilliance? What's next for you? I. I I am actually, um, I already achieved so much as a foreigner here and a lot of roles I'm playing. I'm not Asian because I play, I'm Asian. Uh -huh. But I know, I also learn because I'm not satisfied of what I do because I'm a brilliant actress. I'm not saying as badly, I'm saying I have the gift. I'm brilliant. I never learned. I just can do any role easily. So it was natural, it wasn't that you it's took natural. special classes? I have whatever. a huge uh, movie opening in China next month, ah. which I play. It's called Lord of Shanghai. It's the equivalent like a godfather in U.S. Oh. I play a lady who's a nightlife queen in Shanghai. I play her from 28 years old till 80 years old. Oh, how Eight interesting. The transition. Yeah. How can I do somebody so old? But I move the people even on set to cry. I said, how? That's my brilliance. Right now I'm writing a script. I want to do my own movie, and this movie is going to blow your mind. Because uh, people know by the love actress, I love right? the foreign movies. I never, I never have a problem right. with subtitles. I absolutely really? love the foreign movies. They yeah. have a lot of different colors. But, so yeah. I want to do something because people know I'm a good actress. I want to do something. People will be like, wow. Blown away. Wow. That's something I'm creating. I'm very excited. See the obstacle, because I'm not satisfied, and encouraging me to go higher.
Instead, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna die. No, why? Why there's obstacle? What else? That means if there's obstacle, that means spiling. There's other channels. So you're always testing your limits to the next level, is what I'm hearing. I'm not testing life, testing us. Life, uh huh. And you embrace it as a joy. Like I'm excited about it. I'm not free because you have to always have a child mind, innocence, the curiosity. Because if that you keep. Going for like people ask me how old I'm. You ask me I'm 26 years. Actually, I'm a one year old. Every day is a birthday. I wake up, I open the curtain, I say, "Wow, it's gonna sunny or rainy." I'm so happy. Like I don't. I'm sorry. I'm out. I don't own a television because I don't want to be manipulated with anything. But I like to live my real life. And also, my mind is so pure. If I see some like a fake performance, it's gonna stay there. I I just want my world to be so simple. You're such simple, a pure, pure soul, by I mean, yeah. I just feel it in every cell of my my you being. Too. You are just a beautiful soul. What What's one final tip? Something you could say to that struggling person out there that's watching this? Because you are so inspirational, and I know. I still have to say, love, love, love more of yourself. Mm -hmm. Appreciate more and more of what you have. Like a lot of people, like struggling. Like you see a lot of Africa, a lot of people, or people have child. I support mm -hmm. a lot of uh, children's charity. People have AIDS, like very yes. young. I think think of those people are they're dying of natural life. You have everything. I give you a little example. I come to U.S. I live in New York, right? That was like Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. I landed to New York and the smoke come out of the bread of the ground. I said, "Wow, there's another world." So I walk them by. I don't have money. I don't know language. The homeless on the ground ask me for money. I look at him. I say, "Wow, you have English. You have American passport." I got nothing. You ask me for money? That's if very, I have what you have, I will conquer the world. See, you don't even know what you have. You take it for granted. Like Americans, you're safe. You have everything. Right. But from different point of view, like even the homeless, I'm envious of what he has. He doesn't know what gold he has. He asks me. I like think all that these is children, huge because like the children, like the suffering people. You have family. You have people, community to support you. Right. You don't stand up on your own. You're shameful. I have to say, you have to, it's not appreciated enough. You have to appreciate our people trying so hard, like our program, to help you. Well, I always say to somebody, that has reached that bottom. Let's say someone has become homeless because of drugs or alcohol. I always say, you are so much greater than the circumstances you're in. You don't you, even you are know You're brilliant. It. You're a exactly. star. You have to treasure that. When you take that step as a star, you feel your life's flying. You have so much joy. Then you can help so many people. Yes. Like, I believe we're all here. Today I, you know, I drive like hours to come here. Uh -huh. I think it's worthwhile because I, I think I, in my little way, if I can give help, I encourage help. A lot of people they're on the edge of dying. So if I can do it, I'm a foreigner. I don't have nothing. If I can achieve it, you can too. Well, this You're is, much this more is karma at its yeah. at its best. I want to thank you so much for joining us today at Recovery Today and being a part of this. I think you're going to be inspiring a lot of young people out there, Thank all you. people. Thank and also, you. the final thing I want to say, because I learned English one word mm -hmm. by another, there's two words can basically solve any problem in your life, in your work, in your personal problem. That is give and forgive. Give and forgive. Yeah. Because I, I learned forgive, um, actually it's to give. I think that's very, very powerful when you have a problem, just think about these two give words. And, and also words. forgive yourself too. For sure. I'd love to give you a hug. <laughs> Thank you, bye. Thank you so much. Thank you for the program having me here. Then I hope all your viewers and just love yourself more and appreciate life, appreciate what you have. And we all care and love you.